later that job didn't work out so well and I, I started doing regional delivery. Because uh, I thought I'd be home more to see the family, which basically what regional delivery means is you get up really, really early and get home late, but you sleep in your own bed. And uh, I was driving from Varian Springs toward, to, or that area to, to Grand Rapids, I think it was. And I was driving a semi with this 53 foot reefer trailer. Y'all scared of semis on the road? You should be. Um, I'm driving, because <laughs> you drove. Someone else likes you. I'm driving down the road, and, and suddenly, as I'm in the right hand lane doing the speed limit, not really speeding anything like that, but I, but I look and suddenly in front of me is this car in the right hand lane going slower than I am. And I am barreling down with this 18 wheeler loaded truck. I'm barreling down on this little car. I don't remember what kind of car it was. It was a little car, like, you know, I don't know, an Escort or something. And I'm barreling down on this sucker in my 18 wheeler and I'm like, I'm, I'm getting close to this sucker. And so I reacted just instantaneously, not thinking, just, just reacting. I spiked the brakes. Oops. So you apparently know a little bit about 18 wheelers. Nothing bad happened to the truck. I didn't lose control. I didn't, the trailer didn't start to spin out of control, but it jerked me enough that I woke up. And there was nothing on the road in front of me whatsoever. Oh boy. But I had been asleep. And I was right at that stage where you start to go to sleep and you see strange things, you know? And there was a car suddenly in front of me and as I started to drift off. And thank God that I saw a car, which freaked me out enough to spike the brakes just enough to jolt me to my seatbelt to go, I should probably pull off before I do any damage to myself. I've been afraid. We live in a culture of fear, and perhaps you're dealing with fear. Maybe it's not the micro stuff of, I watched my 401k disappear in the last six months. Maybe it's, I've lost my job, or maybe it's I'm dealing with some relationship stuff that I can't handle, or my children really do scare me a lot more, Brian, than the cereal. You don't understand. They're spinning out of control, and I don't know what to do. Maybe you're dealing with something that's a little more terrifying on a personal level to you. Life is not where you thought it would be, and you're a little bit scared. Our series is the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. And we're taking our inspiration to, from the book of Daniel, chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles, go there right now. Last week we talked about the story of Daniel, chapter 1, this great story of Daniel, which is very cool. Daniel and, I'm not going to eat the food, and God honored him. Good. Daniel, chapter 2, starts out with Nebuchadnezzar. One night, during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. Now, we're going to stop back and get some historical context again, okay? Now, when you think of Babylon, we think of Babylon as like, oh, it's a big kingdom, and they're like strong in the Bible. It talks about them being strong, and it took the Israelites, boom! No, okay, actually, Nebuchadnezzar was a child with a huge, huge, huge inferiority complex. He was a little bit scared, and there was a logical reason for it. You see, right before Babylon, this era is called the Neo-Babylonian era. Not that you needed to know that. I studied it. I was really excited. I feel more intellectual that I shared that word with you. <laughs> All right? This is the era of Babylon coming into its power. Right before this, there was, there was Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's father, and right before that, they had been under the, under the authority, they have been taken over by the Assyrians. So they have been captive. And this country, Babylon that we're talking about, had been under the Assyrian Empire. And Nebuchadnezzar's father decided he didn't like this. Now I want to do just an illustration here for you, okay? All right, we got right here, we have, a Mark, we have Mark Mayfield. Mark and Margie Mayfield. Thank you, okay? <clears throat> Wait, that's not going to work. We're going to go somewhere else. <laughs> we'll come back to you. We're going to go over this side of the room. Find someone else to pick on over here. No, it might be bad. No, I'm not. These guys know what's going on. Right here, okay, right, right here, right here. We're going to go right here, okay? Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, it's your table, right here. Okay, so we have Jeremy. Jeremy's mom, Jeremy's dad. How you doing, Jeremy? Doing good. All right, we'd like to introduce your, your family to, the, to everyone. This is your, your mom, Sue. Yeah. And, and your dad? Bill. Bill. Sue and Drennan is your last. Well, Drennan is your last name. <laughs> Bill. So, so Bill here <coughs> rises up. He, he's. This is no nothing. He rises up and says, "I really don't like the Assyrians over us. This is really a problem." And so he rises up and just pushes back and gains freedom from the Babylonian table. Yeah, you guys are now free. Congratulations, all of you. You've been free. Congratulations, you. Okay. You took over the Assyrians. Mark over here. That was the Assyrian table, and you've now kicked them back over to their table. They're gone now. They left you alone. You were really taking them, telling you what coffee you could drink, what kind of snacks you could eat. It was a problem. You threw them back to their table. Good job. You all are free. Now, what happens then is, if you remember last week, we talked about how Daniel had been, or um, Nebuchadnezzar had been in, in Jerusalem, and then he grabbed the captives, run back home. What had happened is, Bill had died. And, he, and, 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 and Jeremy knew 
that Bontris was gunning for the king's ship. <laughs> so Jeremy had been on this campaign, had been outside Jerusalem. <clears throat> he finally hears word, Dad has died. He has to race back to take over the kingdom to make sure that it's his. So he goes back, he solidifies his power. Then he goes back, destroys Jerusalem, knocks it down, all that kind of stuff. And he continues a campaign because there's still simply one way. He's, this, this little table has been persecuted. They've been beat up on by evil Mark for so long. They're like, we're never doing that again. Okay? So there's one way you survive. How do you survive? Well, you gotta take, you got to get stronger and take over more people. So Jeremy starts on the campaign, and he comes over to the Krenz table and says, y'all are mine. Takes a bunch of captives. Sorry. <laughs> Tough luck. All right? Then he's on a roll, and he takes on the Saladino family, which is scary. <laughs> Okay? Takes down the Saladino family, and he starts on this campaign because that's the way he's going to stay in power. Otherwise, someone's going to rise up and try to take over his kingdom. So what he's been doing is empire building, taking over table, table, table. That's Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar, any throne that's been taken by power is afraid of what? Power. Because someone else is going to try to come over and take, take you over. So Nebuchadnezzar has really got a little bit of a scared complex going on here. Because he's scared that someone's going to come over and take his throne, so he's been out doing battle, 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 okay? Because he's afraid that, you know, Peter and Leanna are going to rise up with their little kingdom over there and come on the war path. You doing all right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Be afraid of Jeremy. <laughs> Bloodthirsty guy. All right. So Jeremy... That's Nebuchadnezzar. That's kind of where Nebuchadnezzar is, is coming from as we start this story. You have to understand that. That's why he's been out on this campaign, on these campaigns. That's why he's been out and, began, and Babylon becomes this huge thing. It wasn't always that way. And, and in the back of Jeremy's mind is the fact that just one generation back, back when his daddy was king, they were conquered by someone else. And he really doesn't want that anymore because it's good to be the king. It's scary, but you'd much rather be the king than be the slave in his mind. Okay? So he's running pretty scared. Okay? Now, back to the story. One night, during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. Okay, so this is funny. Okay, well, hang on. Verse 2. He called in his magicians, his chanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and demanded that they tell him what he dreamed. And they stood before the king. He said, I've had a dream that deeply troubles me, and I must know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic, Long live the king. Tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it means. But the king said to the astrologers, I'm serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you'll be torn limb from limb. Okay, so he's a bit fun. And your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble, which is a pretty sterile word for what that really means. But if you tell me what I dreamed and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. Okay, how many of you had a bad dream? Okay? How many had a weird dream? You're just like, I have no idea what that meant, but dude, I must eat pizza before I'm to bed. Okay? How many of you threatened to kill someone if they didn't tell you what your dream was? TJ. Okay, good. There's always TJ. Alright? Why can't the dude just let it go? <laughs> Move on! Okay? Well, again, you have to understand the culture. In the Babylonian mind, Babylon was the center. Babylon, Babel. Bell, the king, the, the god <clears throat> that they worshipped, it was considered the center of, of wisdom and religious thought. It was all right there. And, and when you had a dream, that was <laughs> the gods talking to you. You had a weird dream? Yeah, you just kind of, like, think that that was God trying to talk to you. Like, really? <laughs> what are you saying? That's a little, okay. That, in his mind, God's telling him something. 